In this video, we'll be checking out the all-new Manjaro 19.0 Kiria. Manjaro 19.0 comes with the latest of all the desktop environments, software packages and provides a cutting-edge computing experience. This version also brings refinements in a lot of areas. We'll be having a closer look at the subtle improvements that are made in the desktop, what's new in Manjaro 19, the performance, the usability of the new OS and everything else there is to cover. I've been playing with Manjaro 19 from a week now and it repeatedly proves itself to be the best rolling release Linux distro for most people. So let's jump right into it. Starting off with the user interface. Manjaro offers all the desktop environments but XFCE is the primary one. We'll have a look at XFCE, GNOME and KDE Plasma in this video. In my opinion, XFCE is not something we need to use in 2020. But when I look at Linux distros which use XFC properly, like Zorin Lite and Manjaro, I ask myself, why not? In a time where we have distros that look like this, it's hard not to pass up on XFC. But Manjaro surprisingly makes XFC look good. The dark and green colors, a stunning icon pack, and a beautiful wallpaper that matches the whole thing. With this version, Manjaro has made some fine refinements in the visuals. The search bar looks better than before with radius added to the corners. Also we get a new theme called Macha. The colors are subtly improved with the new theme while still maintaining the Manjaro branding. Although I'm a huge fan of bottom panel based desktop environments with a simple menu like Cinnamon and Mate, I never quite like XFCE. On distros like Zubuntu, the desktop looks so bland. But Manjaro manages to present XFCE in a pleasing way with its strong colors and a darker base. Manjaro XFC provides a pure performance and productivity oriented computing environment. You get a stable OS with the latest tech out there, which is also very lean. Manjaro is very lightweight because it doesn't come with the shop animations, effects and other glitchy stuff that we can live without and most prefer to live without. For laptops and desktops which come with rather lower specs, Manjaro XFC is very suitable. And for those of us who are not sold on the idea of using XFC in 2020, I present to you Manjaro KDE and GNOME. Manjaro GNOME is my favorite Manjaro. GNOME desktop looks gorgeous with Manjaro and the whole setup is so good to use. We have a new exclusive default wallpaper for Manjaro GNOME which gives the desktop a uniform look. As per the Manjaro branding colors, GNOME desktop 2 comes in kinda dark tint. The window design leans more towards material style with sharp borders. This looks more contemporary when compared to what Ubuntu does with the same GNOME desktop. While there's nothing wrong with XFC, I personally like using Manjaro with GNOME a lot. The fonts are much crisper here and the rendering is way better. You'll feel this difference rather heavily when browsing the web. You might have noticed that some time ago there was a trend of dynamically adjusting the top panel transparency on Windows Maximize and Minimize. Manjaro 19 swaps that mechanism for a solid dark panel and looking at it, I think I like it more now. It keeps the desktop grounded. The dock on the left side looks very premium. It works with Intelli Hide. I think the icon should be a tad bit bigger and less cluttered. Overall, Manjaro is one of the best GNOME distros and provides a modern looking desktop. It feels really good to work on this system. Manjaro KDE This is a purely premium experience. On my Samsung curved monitor, this desktop is looking exceptionally good. KDE is a very polished desktop which has evolved significantly lately. This desktop, while being this classy in terms of visuals, is also very lightweight. Manjaro KDE makes your computer look very expensive. The stunning wallpaper, this polished user interface and the Manjaro theming. It looks more premium than the operating systems that come on $1500, $2500 laptops. But this is free. It's also better in many aspects. KDE Plasma has a very good workflow. It is built to get work done on your PC. Another thing about KDE is it works very smoothly on very old and low powered computers too. Its idle RAM usage is just around 500 MBs. When running on a computer with low power, KDE tones down the effects and stuff and focuses on delivering a responsive desktop. But on computers which come with even modestly good specs, KDE Plasma is a visual treat. The animations, the window effects, everything is stunning here. Manjaro KDE is definitely one of the best KDE Plasma distros. Top points here. While Manjaro is a rolling release operating system, it is still very stable. 
It uses Arch Linux updates as testing grounds and pushes package updates to its users only after confirmed stability. This allows us to have a cutting edge distro which is also highly dependable. Using Manjaro means you get access to the latest versions of all the software at any given time. Manjaro software repositories are huge and contain a very large number of software. Anything and everything you need can be installed with a few clicks in a fast, convenient and secure way. With Manjaro, you can install software from the Arch user repositories, which is the largest collection of Linux software ever. Manjaro uses the Pacman package manager, which is the best package manager in my opinion. Manjaro gets updates pretty fast and Pacman manages everything harmoniously. You can update your computer weekly, monthly or only after a new release and everything will work flawlessly. Also, Manjaro is one of the few Linux distros on which you can install multiple desktop environments on the same installation and have absolutely no problems. Pacman handles dependencies and package conflicts beautifully. Once you install Manjaro on your computer, you can keep using the same installation indefinitely. Manjaro keeps getting updates regularly and everything is kept fresh. Updates are neither intrusive nor sneaked in. Computer updates with your permission every time. And once you permit the update, everything is handled by the OS silently. Of course, you can choose not to update too, and everything will still work without any issues. Although it's my personal recommendation that you update all the rolling release Linux distros every couple months or so at the minimum. All in all, Manjaro is a great operating system solution for students and homes. Manjaro XFC is built with two main aims to be very efficient in terms of system resources and be fast as far as responsiveness is concerned. Although I recommend either GNOME or KD variants for most people, Manjaro XFC is very suitable for older computers. This thing right here breathes a new life into older machines. You will get a satisfactory performance from machines that are even close to their death. KDE is good for moderately powerful laptops and desktops that don't come with powerful GPUs. The interface is very modern and still delivers a performance that is fast. In fact, Manjaro KDE is a great choice for anyone looking to squeeze every ounce of performance from their machine. Manjaro GNOME is great too. Although it consumes more resources than the other two variants on this list, it still works butter smooth on anything with moderate power. Manjaro is a fresh Linux distro. It is optimized and has great support for hardware. It comes with a hardware detection tool using which you can easily install the most appropriate drivers for your graphics cards and stuff with just a few clicks. It also allows you to install the newest and the best drivers that provide the optimal performance you can get. Manjaro is one of the biggest community driven projects. Community plays a pivotal role in the development of Manjaro. And Manjaro has a very detailed, organized and in-depth documentation. The forums are really active with beginner-friendly solutions and guides written by the volunteers. Advanced operations, troubleshooting, help in general is offered enthusiastically in the Manjaro forums. Gotta love that. And for a majority of things, you can use ArchWiki too. Since Manjaro is a direct descendant of Arch, pretty much all the info available on ArchWiki guides can be used for Manjaro. Manjaro comes with Steam pre-installed. Now with Steam's Proton feature, a huge library of Windows exclusive games has become playable on Linux. Manjaro has great support for Nvidia graphics cards and it is very efficient. Manjaro has new packages and doesn't roll too fast. So Manjaro is definitely one of the best Linux distros for gaming, be it serious gaming or casual weekend gaming. Manjaro installation takes around 15 minutes and is very beginner friendly. After the installation, installing the proprietary drivers for your hardware is also straightforward with Manjaro's hardware detection tool. With Manjaro, you can install and use multiple desktop environments on the same installation without having any conflicts. Everything is simple and easy here. Manjaro 19 Kiria is the latest and the most polished experience of this amazing Linux distro. Manjaro brings simplicity to rolling release Linux distros. It makes this bleeding edge model dependable and usable for many people. Maintaining a bleeding edge distro is not easy, but the amazing Manjaro developers and the community pull this off, and with professional standards. What you can expect from Manjaro? Well, it provides a computing environment that is and feels newer than most operating systems out there. It provides the cutting edge tech to you. It allows you to experience the newest packages long before they hit most other Linux distros. It does all this while also being dependable. In 2020, Manjaro is a great choice for students and home usage, especially if you want something that is fresh, always.
Well, that's it for today. If you like this video, do consider hitting the subscribe button below. Next up, check out my review of Kali Linux in 2020. This is Linux Techs signing out.